Good morning, Year One. This is our final day of week two of Jack and the Beanstalk, and today we're going to be writing our ending of our story. So today we're going to be changing the ending of our story. So we need to think of an alternative ending for our story and you need to know where the end of the story is. So the ending of a story tells us how the story ends. In fairy tales, there's usually a happy ending whereby a lesson has been learned by the character or their luck has changed. So thinking to our story of Jack and the Beanstalk, at the start of the story, we understand that Jack and his mum are very poor. We know this because of the word poor and because they live in a ramshackled house and they sold their cow because they need money for food. So they don't have much. So by the end of the story, after they have grabbed that expensive hen, which they can sell, they now have money for food and clothes and probably for even a better house. So their luck has changed and there's a very happy ending because now they're li living a much better life by the end of the story because they are rich. So I am going to be reading different fairy tale endings from stories that you are likely to know. So when I am reading this story, we need to think about two things. We need to think about what makes it a fairy tale ending. So thinking about does it have a happy ending? Do we learn a lesson? What happens with the characters? And what do you like about it? What do you like about these different fairy tale endings? So let's get started with our first fairy tale. Here we have the ending to a version of The Little Red Riding Hood, which I'm going to read, and then we'll have some thinking in time about our two questions. Little Red hugged Granny tight. I'm so glad you chased that wolf away, she said, and she gave Granny the basket of fruit. What a day of excitement, laughed Granny. Now let's all have breakfast. So let's think about these two questions. So we need to think about what makes it a fairy tale ending and what do you like about it? So I'm going to give us 30 seconds thinking time to think about what makes it a fairy tale ending, thinking about what happens, is there something happy, do we learn a lesson? And then what do you like about it? So you're going to now have some thinking time. OK, so what makes it a fairy tale ending? Can you shout your out your answer to the screen in three, two, one? Fantastic. So we have a happy ending. In the end, Little Red Riding Hood gets to have breakfast with her granny and the wolf doesn't ruin that plan. So we've got a very happy ending there. And what do you like about this ending? Can you shout out what you do you like about it in three, two, one? Fantastic. Next, we're reading the ending to Cinderella. So this is a version that I found and I'm going to read it to you and then we'll have some thinking time about our two questions. Suddenly, the prince recognised Cinderella as the girl from the ball and he was overjoyed. I have found my bride at last, he cried. Will you marry me? Cinderella said yes and they lived happily ever after. So you must know the story Cinderella because it's a very classic fairy tale. So let's think what makes it a fairy tale? Let's have some thinking time. What makes it a fairy tale ending? Can you tell me in three, two, one? 
Well done, we've got a happy ending that Cinderella lived happily ever, ever after with her prince. And we've also learned a lesson. If you know the story Cinderella, you know throughout the story, she isn't treated too great by her stepmom and stepsisters. And she has to do all the chores around the house, but she's always such a kind and loving person. And that shows that by the end, she deserves her happy ending. The, the stepsisters don't because they are very unkind people, so they will not get a happy ending. So we learn if you are kind and caring, then you're going to have a happy ending. And then what do you like about this ending? Is there any words that you like or anything in particular you like about this ending? Let's have some thinking time. OK, can you shout out to the screen? What do you like about this ending? In three, two, one. Amazing. I really like the ending. They lived happily ever after, which is a very classic fairy tale ending. And we've got one more from Jack and the Beanstalk. So we know this story because we've been learning it. This is a different version. So I'm going to read this ending and we're going to think about what makes it a fairy tale ending. And with the gold and the harp and the eggs and the hen, Jack and his mother were never poor again. So what makes this a fairy tale ending? Have some thinking time. OK, can you say your answer to the screen in three? Two, one, shout it out. Fantastic, there is a happy ending. Jack and his mum were never poor again, which is a very happy thing to happen. And what do you like about this ending? So I'm thinking, Tom, what do you like about it? Shout it out in three, two, one. Excellent idea, me too. So now that we have talked about fairy tale endings and we've read different endings from different stories, now we've got some ideas about what we could do for our ending. Today we're going to change our ending. So in our original story of Jack and the Beanstalk, we had that his mum and Jack were delighted because they were rich and they lived happily ever after. But we can now think of something that's completely different. So in our story, Jack grabs the expensive hen and races back home. So then we need to think what happens after that. They now have money because they have an expensive hen. So what could they do with that money? What do they need? Maybe they need some food or a better house or they could do something else. Maybe they can get back what they sold in the market. Here are some ideas that I came up with. So they could invite the entire village over for dinner every day for the rest of their life because now they've got lots of money. They can share all their food with their village and the people that live around them. They maybe they're going to buy a castle in a faraway kingdom. Maybe they're going to live with all their animals and their hen. Or maybe they bought back their plumpest cow or their fluffiest sheep and lived happily ever after. So it's completely up to you what they could do at the end of your story. So right now I'm going to show you how I wrote down my ideas on my vocabulary list. So now the exciting part, we need to think of a different ending for our main character and his mum, because now they have all the money and they're rich, so we can think about what could they do with all that money. So maybe you could think about the item that they sold, maybe they want to buy it back. I like the idea because I had an orange tree that they are, that they bought all the orange trees in the entire kingdom. 
So they bought everything back, maybe everywhere. But maybe they bought all the orange trees and maybe they bought all the sheep in the world because they are so rich. I like the idea, maybe they want to share their money with other people. So maybe they put... dinner for their entire town. Maybe they could do that every Sunday or every week. And maybe they could buy something else. Maybe they need a new house. So they bought A beautiful, maybe they buy a beautiful farm because they really like animals. So those are all my ideas. And I put them all out and I put a capital letter for them all because it's going to be a start of my sentence. Now it's your turn to write down your ideas. You're going to write it down on your sheet of paper. So grab a pencil and a piece of paper or whiteboard and a pen and you're going to write down some ideas for your ending. Trying to be as creative and imaginative as possible because they can do whatever they want because now they have lots of money. So let your imaginations run wild. I want you to pause the video and I want you to write down your ideas and then come back when you're ready to change the next part of our story. Now we're going to move on to the next thing we're going to change. We are going to change the emotion that Jack and his mum are feeling in our story. Jack and his mum were delighted. They were very happy because they were rich, but we are going to change our word delighted. Now, as you can see, delighted has ed because it is past tense. So most of your words that you are going to create will need a ED on the end to be past tense, but some of them might not. So here are some ideas I came up with to see how they were feeling. Maybe they are thrilled, ecstatic, excited, happy, overjoyed, over the moon. So that it needs to be a re really positive feeling. They're not going to feel angry or sad. They're going to be happy and excited, over the moon, thrilled because now they've got all this money so all their problems have gone away because now they have the expensive hen and her golden eggs. So now I'm going to write down some words on my vocabulary list under my ending ideas. The next thing I'm also going to need is how they are feeling. So it's going to be feeling a really positive feeling because now all their problems are solved and now they are rich. So we have the word delighted. So here I have a really happy person to remind me what I need to write about. So we need to think of other words for delighted, so other words for happy. So I love the word aesthetic. I love the word that they are excited. They are excited about their future and what is to come. And I love the phrase over the moon. They are really, really happy. So I've got at least three ideas for a really happy and positive feeling that your main character and the mum are going to feel. And now it's your go to write down your different emotions. I want you to write at least three different ideas and you can pick one later for your writing. You can magpie some of my ideas here or you can come up with your own. So I would like you to pause the video and come back when you are ready to move on.
OK, you are ready. So we have changed the ending and we have changed our emotion, our main character and his mum are feeling. So now you are ready to write your ending. This is the last bit of our story. So let's go through our actions and our work to remember each part. Jack and his mum were delighted because now they were rich. Stop. They lived happily ever after. Stop. Well done. So now it's my go to write my ending. Here I've got my story map to help me. I am just going to cross out the word delighted because we know we're changing that. And then I know I'm going to change my ending. I can still have they lived happily ever after. Before that, I need to talk about what they did with all that money. So you can still have that ending or you can change it completely. It's up to you. But I'm going to write mine now. So I've got my vocabulary list. I've got my story map on my screen. And then after I have finished, I have got my writing checklist to go through my sentences. So off I go. So now we're writing our ending and writing underneath my resolution from yesterday and I've got my vocabulary sheet here which has two things I'm going to use today very important so looking at my story map to help me I've got a picture of Jack and his mum so obviously we're not writing Jack we're writing someone else I'm writing Tom so Tom and his, who's the other character? His mother or mum, whatever you want to write. And his mother were, we're delighted, but we're not having delight today. Number two, which emotion is Jack and his mum going to feel? I love the word ecstatic. So I'm going to take that off and copy my spelling. Were. ecstatic but why why are they so happy this is why my conjunction because to help me give more detail and explain to the reader why they are so happy because now they were rich that's very exciting so i could also add a exclamation mark if I want to because now they were rich and this is my very exciting part where I get to change the ending so I've got lots of different ideas about what my character Tom and his mum could do with all that money I like the idea oh what could they do I like the idea about the item that they they sold and what they're going to do about that. They love orange trees so much. I like the idea they brought all the orange trees in the entire kingdom. So capital letter, they bought all the orange trees e what can you see in the entire so means all of it the whole be an entire world entire kingdom entire town i want to do entire kingdom full stop and if I really wanted to, I could add them in another sentence about what they could do with all those orange trees. Maybe they make everybody fresh orange juice every morning. Maybe they um, sell their oranges or maybe they give them to the less fortunate. I don't know, but I could extra detail if I really want to do a super duper challenge. But now I'm going to read back my sentence so I can edit it and see if I've missed anything out. Tom and his mother were ecstatic because now they were rich. They bought all the orange trees in the entire kingdom. Fantastic. Got my capital letters. Got an exclamation mark and a full stop. I've changed my word delighted to ecstatic and I have changed my ending. Fantastic. 
now it is your go to write your ending. This is the last piece of your story, so making sure you're really taking pride in your work, making sure you're writing on the line, trying really hard with your handwriting, starting at the margin and writing all the way to the end of the line. You are going to use a story map here on the screen once you pause the video and after you have finished, you are going to use a writing checklist to edit your work afterwards. So you're going to pause the video here and if you need, you can always go back to my version of the ending to magpie some ideas or if you can't remember what comes next, you can always rewind the video to look at mine. But pause the video here because you can look at the story map. I can't wait to see all your work on Seesaw. Good luck.